Larry here again, session four. We're going to be deciding for ourselves, taking a moment to make choices of where to place our attention wisely on the voices and communications and messages we have been receiving or we're receiving now. This is the selective watering process. Which seeds, which wholesome seeds, which wholesome influences do we want to empower in our mind space, in our bodies with their energy and vibrations? Which voices will uplift us to higher levels and deeper levels in our practice of compassion and wisdom? I was thinking the other day of a, a, a funny, not funny, but strange commercial uh, I've seen more than once, but it's, it's, it was a question people get asked sometimes. If you were on an island, who would you want there? And I think that's the question of this session. Um, we know we have a practice in the Plum Village tradition called uh, going back to my island returning to my island of self. And Thai has also always encouraged us and even led us in the meditation of constructing our island. What do we want on our island? What resources, what visions do we want to be living with on our island of self? And in this sense, what we're looking at here is what energies of people do we want to surround us as an inner Sangha? Not simply as acquaintances or friends or mentors, though all of that is good and wonderful. But this is going deeper in making a choice to bring intentionality to your inner Sangha. And so you may have or may not have discovered your inner Sangha is distant from you. You may have discovered it is hard to recognize it, uh, hard or difficult to name it. It's important to remember the naming of it is not about judgment. It's about description. And, and if you have a description, uh, like my uncle Jake uh, was a hard worker. Whenever I remember him, he worked construction, building roads and things. And whenever I used to have to do physical things, which I did a lot of around the world in villages. Uncle Jake, every now and then would come up <laughs> while I was digging a latrine. And and uh, he worked hard. And so I did not feel weird working hard. I felt that I was keeping with what I had learned uh, about being present in the world in a helpful way. And so that's just a a family uh, message uh, that I found helpful and inspiring many times. And so who are your advisors? If you were going to have a, a caretaking council for your inner community, who would be on that council? Uh, or another image is, uh, the round table. Uh, if you were going to have a round table where you could have question and answers uh, without blame, without judgment, um, who would be a, who would you want around the table right now based on what's actually happening in your life and the questions that are rising up for you as a practitioner? Whose presence? whose thinking, whose language, and whose behavior would be nourishing for you to be in the presence of inside Sangha within. Of course, as well as outside Sangha, but you're with yourself all the time. And so it really matters uh, who you're in dialogue with. As your thinking is shaped and reshaped, as your speech is shaped and reshaped, and as your behavior 
is shaped and reshaped. And I know there's a lot of words in this process we're doing. And um, there's a lot of words. But we are all intelligent enough to know as practitioners, words are pointing to energy. They are not a special thing in and of themselves, except they are helpful or can be helpful. So every now and then hold a Q&A with your uh, and see what comes up. You may be surprised at the ideas and the questions that arise that you still have that may have been unconscious, may have been buried in your storehouse uh, because of your pain or your suffering or your busyness. And so to be able to look oneself in the mirror this way with love and respect and tenderness and skillfulness can aid us in our deepening of the path and the practice of the four right efforts. This is another way to describe what this series is about. Right diligence, how to take care. One of the things uh, Ty said over the last several years is what does it mean to take good care of your Sangha? What does it mean to take good care of your continuation? And a uh, part of your continuation, my continuation is inside of us. The hermit in the well that was there for Ty is in me, in you. The school for social service in Vietnam where our brothers and sisters were assassinated is in us. Precious memories of love and compassion and wisdom in action. One more thing about the internal Sangha. I've learned myself, experienced over 40 years, the quality of my internal Sangha influences the quality of my external Sangha. When my internal Sangha is not happy, <laughs> it's difficult for me to bring happiness to my external Sangha. When my internal Sangha is not calm, peaceful, it's difficult for me to bring the energy, the high energy of that peacefulness to my Sangha, to my whoever I'm in relationship with on a daily basis, my family, my partner, my community, my children, my parents, whoever I might be in close proximity to. So the practices here are not just uh, for uh, an isolated experience but for a daily practice of acknowledgement and now who, who should you communicate that you're thankful for? Who do you need to write a note to or send a card or make a phone call expressing gratitude for them, their support of your inner life? Who is that? Who nourishes your seeds of joy? and happiness and courage and diligence. Let them know that. Let them know that. And some of our, some of my influential Sangha members are, are not alive at this moment. Some have never been alive. Some are fiction. But uh, I will admit that Don Quixote is on my internal Sangha. The message of marching into hell for heavenly cause resonates in my heart. So find for yourself what resonates from the messages in your heart. And remember, I know you do this, but remember that to protect your boundaries. Guard your senses. Don't dwell on every message you receive from the outside world. Learn to protect yourself, instantly recognize that this message, the energy of this message is not helpful, healthy and wise for me. And the more you can learn your body and mind's response to the internal community, 
the more you can recognize what is helpful and what is not helpful in the external messages you receive because you're in touch with your body sensations of energy and joy. So this is not an internal community to have a meeting with. Um, you know, no one likes meetings that I know of externally. So why would you like an internal meeting? So it can't be a meeting format. If you want a dialogue, you can do one-on-one. -on -one. You can call in a trio. I often call in five, the pan giant structure in villages in India as five members. Uh, and members can change. Sometimes I need to have my grandmother sitting there. Sometimes I don't. Um, and that's fine. But you should know who is always there. I know Ty is always there for me. I know Joseph Matthews is always there for me. And, and be able to savor that connection. Uh, respect that connection. Honor that connection because that nourishes you. The last thing I would say is, in the Christian tradition, there's a song about Jesus. There are many. But one I want to point to now is the power of this practice. The song, he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own. That's who you're looking for, for a member of your inner song. Ty is that for me. And the blessedness of having the song and the noble community within is priceless. Thank you.